first step is to use debubbler on the ring, and you want to spray the ring so that it covers with debubbler, and that's going to help the investment to slide over the surface of the wax instead of maybe getting caught and creating air pockets. Then I'm going to take the flask and attach it to the sprue base. It's going to be a tight fit, so you'll have to use your fingers to kind of wriggle it together without knocking your wax loose. Just like that. It's going to be to create a collar on your flask, and we're going to do that on a piece of tape. So get a long piece of tape, and you're going to very carefully wrap the tape around the flask so that you create a very tall collar all the way around. What that's going to do is it's going to give the investment room to expand so that you can get rid of the air pockets. The next step is to measure the height and width of your flask so you can determine how much investment you want to make. So this flask is three inches tall and two and a half inches wide. So at two and a half inches wide and three inches tall, we can go in here and highlight. And we're going to need 154 cc's of water, and we're going to need 386 grams of investment. So for this cask, we need 154 cc's of water. This measuring tool only goes up to 100 millis, or 100 cc's, so we're going to fill this up to 100 more. Being careful to get a perfect measurement. Pour it into the rubber pole, and then another 15 more. So that's 154 cc's of water into the rubber pole. So the next step is requiring us to use investment. So the first thing you want to do is you want to put on a mask so that you don't breathe any silica in it. And I like to wear rubber gloves so that it doesn't dry my skin out. However, if you're only using it for a couple of minutes, it's not a big deal. It's when you're using it for hours that it could cause your skin to dry out. Next, I want to turn the scale on, but I want to turn the scale on with the container on top so it zeroes out the weight of the container. So it's at 0, 0.00 even with the container on it. I need to measure out 366 grams of investments. So, scooping the investment out of the container very carefully and dumping it in to the container that's on the scale. Now, unfortunately, this scale only goes up to 250 grams, and so you'll have to measure out 250 grams and then measure out the balance, or you'll have to measure out 250 grams and another 250 grams and so forth until you get to the amount that you need. Dumping this into a separate container so that I have all of my investment together before I put it into my water in the rubber pool. So right now I need... One hundred and thirty six grams of investment. That's a horrible. So this is 386 grams of investment. I'm now going to take that and dump it in to my 154 cc's of water. And I'm going to continue to stir it. It should be similar to pancake batter when you're done. You want to try to be careful not to incorporate air bubbles into the investment while you're stirring it together. So if you cook, a folding technique might be something better to use. 
can also take the spatula and smash the investment up against the edge of the bowl to remove any lumps. When you see that you don't really have any lumps of investment, you're going to take this bowl and you're going to go to the casting machine. Stick a rubber bowl onto the casting machine and you're going to put the bell jar on top and you're using the brown rubber mat. The next step is you have to turn the compressor on. And then you're going to switch from cast to invest on the machine. Notice how the pressure went up when I did that. The bowl will move around and the bell jar is secure on here. What we're going to do is we're going to wait until we start to see little air pockets popping out of the investment. Once it starts to look like it's boiling, even though it's not hot, it's going to look like it's boiling because it's releasing the air bubbles, you're going to count about 30 seconds. So from about now, we're going to count about 30 seconds. And what you're going to see is you're going to see the investment rise inside of the bowl as it's releasing the air. After the 30 second count, you're going to turn the switch on the machine back to cast, and you're going to turn the compressor off. And you're going to wait for the vacuum to settle. You can watch this gauge right here to determine when it's released all the air pressure. So we have some temporarily invested in the bowl. When we pour the investment into the flask, you need to pour it in an angle so that you're not pouring it onto the wax. If you pour it onto the wax, you could actually, uh, actually knock your wax loose, and then you've lost your cast. You want to fill this up to almost the lip of the flask. If it seems like it's going to seep over the lid of the flask, you can take your fingers and scoop a little out and put it back in the bowl. You're going to take this and you're going to put it back on the vacuum casting table. So now that the flask is back on the casting table with the investment in it, we're going to put the bell jar back on it again, turn the compressor back on, and then switch from cast to invest again. doing is we're um, trying to wait for it to start bubbling again and it's going ri to start rising for another 30 seconds or so and it's going to reach about the top edge of the tape. When it reaches the top edge of the tape you have to turn the machines off. Again, table first and then compressor. Now we see the investment starting to rise inside of the flask, up into the tape area. And before it starts to overflow, you want to turn the table off and the compressor. The next step is to rip the collar off of the flask. And you need to clean the lip of your flask. If the lip of the flask is not clean, this surface, which is going to flip upside down after it's hardened onto the casting table, will not seal. You won't get a vacuum and your piece will not cast with the metal completely. So this lip has to be clean. Okay.
the next step would be to wait for the investment to harden and then carve your initials and your class period into the top so that we know who it belongs to.